Hey, thank you for sliding by the We Need to Talk YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and then click the bell so that way you could be notified every time there's a brand new video upload. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and Snapchat at We Need to Talk. That's at W E N E E D, the number two T L K. Because we need to talk, and you can put a stamp on it. 23 people dead, including children, after a deadly outbreak of tornadoes, the worst the country has seen in almost five years. Right now, search crews are fanning out across Lee County where tornadoes ripped apart homes and flattened neighborhoods. Dozens of people are injured. Emergency workers are digging through debris still for more survivors and, of course, more victims. Everyone grappling with the size and strength of this storm. A lot of them are, are just very good neighbors. Uh, we did have a uh, We've had several families that have probably just lost everybody in that whole family. Oh, my goodness. CNN's Kaylee Hartung. She's in Alabama, Opelika, Alabama, for us right now. Kaylee, what are you seeing there? Kate, uh, Lee County has turned into this unfamiliar maze of debris from homes absolutely decimated like this one behind me. Down trees, down power lines, and roads that are passable oftentimes have police checkpoints set up at them so that only homeowners and residents can get back to the areas uh, that are uh, really just the most difficult to see. Search and rescue the priority for authorities today. That process continuing the overnight. We learned the death toll would climb to 23. The sheriff and the coroner both telling me this morning they expect that number to continue to rise. And you mentioned it, Kate. It is difficult for so many people here to grapple with what they're seeing as the sun comes up this morning. Here's more from the sheriff. I have not seen this type of uh, level of destruction uh, ever in, in uh, my experience here in, in Lee County. Uh, and that covers a span back, I know, for at least 50 years. We have not had anything of this nature before. This hurts my heart. Um, I, I, I love this county. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's extremely upsetting to me to, to see these people hurting like this. And we don't know what this home behind me looked like before it got in the tornado's path yesterday, but we just learned, Kate, there was an older man and his wife at home yesterday when that first deadly tornado ripped through here. Their son, living in a trailer behind the home, came running out after this home was hit. He ran to the street. We just met the man who passed him pulled his truck into the driveway and immediately began the process with his own wife and child helping of pulling this older couple out of the wreckage. That man just came by to see if we'd met the homeowners today to see how they were doing, but we haven't. What we do know though is that they are safe, though their home is not. Yeah, well, silver linings though is, is that, is that they are safe and you gotta love a neighbor, helping out a neighbor like that. Kaylee, I really appreciate it. There are gonna be many more stories coming out just like that from places like Opelika. One of the towns that is hardest hit in Lee County is Smith Station. You can just look at that right there. That is the crumpled and twisted pile of metal you see is what was left of a cell tower, actually, um, that collapsed when the tornado ripped through, collapsed over onto a highway, um, a, a big highway there. Joining me right now is the mayor of Smith Station, Mayor Bubba Copeland. Joining right now on the phone. Mayor, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for getting on and what is such a hard day for everyone, including yourself. The latest that we have heard from your town is that there were 20 homes destroyed, but thankfully, the latest I'd heard is that there were no reports of, of deaths. Is that still the case? Yes, great. The, the homes destroyed have gone up to in the, in the number of 30 now. Um, it was a wage tornado that came through yesterday at about 3 o'clock and uh, totally leveled a spot, probably 200 yards wide about a mile long, uh, just completely destroyed everything in its path from uh, parts of a school to houses to cell phone tower to businesses, uh, residents. Uh, it's, a, it's a tragic, tragic situation. Uh, in my history of being part of Smith Station, I've lived here my whole life. We've seen, had several tornadoes and I've never seen anything this devastating and uh, that, that happened so quickly. Exactly. I mean, 200 yards wide, a mile long. It is, in some of the pictures that we're seeing here from other parts of Alabama, it is always so, I would say, almost nearly impossible to wrap 
our minds around the force that is required to create such destruction in such a small amount of time, and it always seems to be so haphazard. One, an well, entire please. street demolished, yet another one home remains in, in how it is with the tornado. Yeah, something that we experienced was a uh, two 12-ton air conditioners that were on top of a school were picked up and thrown 35 feet into a cemetery. That's oh as, that's as heavy as a, as a school bus was thrown uh, some 35 feet. Not to mention, my trailer homes were turned upside down with the wheels where the roof should be. Um, trees cut off at about 15 feet in the air. Uh, unbelievable devastation. We were able to save people yesterday. We had to cut our way in with chainsaws and, and skid steers and luckily the community come together and, and when we cut our way in we were able to uh, we were able to get to people that were trapped in their homes we were able to get them out yesterday we had one lady that was on oxygen we got her out another lady that was evidently that the wall had collapsed on on her our chair and her bed we were able to get her out and uh the community has come together it, it was not any everyone worked together yesterday to help the citizens and I'm so proud of this community of Smith Station. But our hearts and prayers go out with our, our sister city board guard uh, to the, just to the north of us as they've lost so many through this tragic situation. And, and I read that you you helped, you actually were part of the efforts helping pull some people from from the wreckage. I mean, what are you hearing yeah. from folks in Smith Station on, on what this was like yesterday to live through? Well, I can only describe you what I saw with my own eyes. And uh, to see people standing in their front yard looking up the sky in total shock shortly after it come through, um, I can tell you that, that when the alarms go off, no matter where you're at, from Oklahoma to Texas to Alabama, they're not going off fake. They're going off for real. Find cover, seek cover. Even if you miss it this time, next time you may not miss it. After what I have seen with my own eyes, the devastation is absolutely incredible. Are you aware of any... Anyone still missing in your in your town? There's no one missing in, in my city. We have before we uh, before I went to bed last night. We made sure everybody was was uh, we made sure everybody had a place to lay their head at with a family member or um, at another residence or shelter. Thank God for that. You've lived you, as yeah. you mentioned. You, you've lived in Smith Station your whole life. I mean, now with the sun coming up and a new day that that everyone is facing. I mean, how do you describe the reality you all are facing today? Well, you know, I'll tell you, it's just a grim reminder of, of how powerful nature is. But it's also it's heartwarming to see the community come together. Everyone from our, our local university, Auburn University, to our sister a state, Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, mm -hmm. um, the people are, are volunteering their efforts and going above and beyond to help us to get back on our feet. It's, it's, it's going to be a while. In the next days, weeks, and months, we're going to need the prayers of the nation as well as the prayers of Alabama. And uh, Alabama, you know, we're the city, the state that we are, and we're going to rebuild. And Smith Station, the Smith Station, strong, and we'll be okay. Beyond prayers, if there's anything you need, you please let us know. Yes, and please say if anybody's watching this that has been affected by the storm to call 211 if they have any needs. 100%. We'll make sure we get that out there. And people heard you say it just now, Mayor. Thank you so much for taking a moment to speak with us on what's an incredibly rough day um, for you and yes, everyone there. You. Appreciate it. Thank you, Bella. Thank you so much. My goodness. The National Weather Service today is on the ground in Alabama to try to get a sense of just how many and how powerful those torna these tornadoes were that created this damage that the mayor was just describing to us. Let's go to the Weather Center. CNN meteorologist Chad Myers is there. Chad, what are they looking at when while they're on the ground? Talk about this force that we're looking at. They're looking at damage. They're looking at what happened to a brick structure or its roof, what happened to a wood structure or its roof. They're not looking at mobile home parks. They're not looking at really manufactured homes because they can blow over an 80 or 95 mile per hour wind. We're way beyond that. There's nothing we're going to learn from a mobile home. We're only going to be able to learn how strong this was by a strong brick structure that has never been knocked down before. So last night, before the Weather Service actually had to call it quits because of darkness, they found 65-mile-per-hour storm all the way from almost Tuskegee right on into Smith Station. All those dots you see right there. About a half a mile wide and somewhere around 150 mile per hour winds knocking things down. Now, the winds blow things around, they pick things up, but what I saw yesterday 
Kate, was that there were 10 separate cells all at one time, all producing tornado warnings from different storms. You don't see that a lot. You see that in Oklahoma and Kansas in an outbreak or in Xenia, Ohio in 1974. You don't see 10 tornadoes on the ground all at one time. But Dixie Alley now kind of getting that reputation because the humidity from the Gulf Coast and the cold air that is making snow in Boston, they got together. They got together to make 36 tornadoes, maybe a little bit less because probably one or two of those tornadoes was likely um, the same one just looked at from a different direction. But let's get to this EF3, EF4 nonsense because uh, been, we've been talking about this all day. EF3 tornado, severe damage. Homes are gone. People's lives are lost. Anything that's not tied down is moved somewhere. Somewhere around 150 miles per hour. That's what the Weather Service saw yesterday before it got dark. Now they have more time today to look to see whether it was an EF4 tornado. EF4 tornado means 166 or above. That's like being inside the eye wall of a Category 5 hurricane. A lot like some people did experience that in Florida this year, near that almost 155 mile per hour marker, 156. So it's not long. You're not in it for hours or minutes or even 10 minutes like you would be in a hurricane.